Hi, this is Robin Heppel from FuneralFuturist.com and today we're talking about the seven M's of funeral home marketing. And in this, uh, in this presentation, we're going to um, you know, go through this process of uh, mindset, market, message, media, mechanics, metrics, and motion. And if you haven't already done so, it was in one of the, um, in the lead up uh, emails that you would have received through the GoToWebinar um, uh, email system. Uh, there is a link to a, a checklist. So I'll give you a couple minutes just to, um, uh, to download that. So open up another browser and just go to uh, funeralmarketingblueprint.com and uh, forward slash 7mchecklist.pdf and you can um, you can work th uh, you, we can kind of work through this together and this is going to be kind of the tool or checklist that you can then use uh, when you're creating uh, new ads um, uh, new types of uh, any types of marketing really and it takes you through this seven step process so I'll give you a bit of time to do that now um, I'll let me see here okay so the um, the web address again is um, funeralmarketingblueprint.com forward slash 7m checklist dot PDF and it is on the screen if you can uh, uh, hopefully you can see my screen and what I've done is I've taken this blue uh, little box here and I've put it on all the uh, uh, the next half dozen pages or so so as I'm just giving you a little bit of background you'll still be able to get that uh, please let me know if you're having if others are having problems with that so I want to give you a little bit of background here kind of leading up to this so uh, you know, most of you know, but um, every so often it, it doesn't hurt to tell tell your story. Uh, so it's been 25 years now that I've been in uh, funeral service, and uh, over that time too, I've invested a lot of money in education, uh, over fifty thousand dollars in in training programs and uh, going to conferences, and you know that's not including travel or hotel, or uh, you know fun afterwards at the lounge. It's that's just the tuition costs. And also, too, uh, we've developed over a hundred websites now, uh, for all for the all within the funeral industry. Here's a picture of myself with uh, Dave and Debbie McCall when I was uh, uh, at McCall's, and we had just won. Uh, I was the top sale, pre need salesperson in North America for Monumental Life Insurance Company, and uh, so they. Uh, uh, flew the three of us down to uh, Tucson, Arizona for their annual uh, uh, awards uh, meeting and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun but uh, so we've you know we conquered a lot here up in uh, up in Victoria. Victoria is a, a unique market it is kind of on the real edge of uh, trends and change we're currently at 92 percent cremation kind of people don't eat you know you don't even keep track anymore um, you know, just because it, it's this is the traditional tr cremation is the traditional way of uh, disposition, but it doesn't mean that uh, it's all immediate cremation. I, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, it's not that at all. And uh, also, too, it's quite uh, quite competitive. Um, but uh, you know, in that kind of from that time, going from being a, a pre need uh, rep at McCall's, and then starting my own consultancy. And basically, what what I was end up doing for McCall's, starting to do for others, because we'd kind of been on the forefront of a lot of these changes that were happening, and we kind of had to stumble through them and figure them out myself or ourselves. And uh, you know, since that time, I've presented over forty different uh, funeral industry conferences and conventions, uh, hosted uh, over a hundred webinars and, and counting, uh, you know, including today, uh, the number keeps growing. And um, also, too, on a on a regular basis, just locally, um, the faculty up at uh, UVic here in the business uh, department, um, they have me come up and because uh, you know, they don't really at at university, you know, they are all taught out of textbooks and things like that. So it's you know, there's not a lot of um, textbooks on 
online marketing and and things like that and uh, and so even universities are taking a real change of how that kind of training is uh, implemented into their programs and uh, so I uh, I've been asked to help them out and also sit on panels for them for their uh, BCom students and their MBA students in their final presentations just to just to really audit their marketing process if they've really thought it through and how this you know how this came uh, came about the the creation of what I call the funeral marketing blueprint is that during my consultations with clients uh, I discovered a, a real common issue and uh, you might be able to relate to this but um, and you know this isn't derogatory this is just what I observed and um, it seems to be that um, a lot of them are what I would call reactionary marketers so uh, you know what happens is they're not really thinking about marketing they're they're thinking about their you know running their facilities and serving the families and and that's why we do what we do right but um, but what would happen is uh, and most often it would be the yellow page person because they've got that you know that fine de uh, deadline of hey your ad has to be in and uh, and that kind of you know, transpires into maybe it's a church bulletin ad or maybe it's some other um, other form of marketing that um, it, a deadline is presented and um, kind of and I think from the middle of the process so you know someone in a certain part of the uh, you know a certain type of media um, this media channel you're you know they're said hey here's a deadline here's an opportunity and without really thinking through the entire process of how how that would work so what um, what I started to do then is when I would sit down with them I'd kind of have to regroup and in my head I would just kind of say okay let's uh, let's step back a bit and kind of let's just kind of talk this through and what I found was um, what was going on in um, in my head was I was just kind of going through this process of you know first of all uh, starting with a, a good mindset of what we're trying to do and um, thinking like a marketer is different than thinking like a funeral director and uh, and there's lots of things that we can uh, if we if we don't start that process we can um, go down rabbit holes and we can also get really sidetracked and we're spending a lot of money in our marketing and we don't want to um, and and we don't want to just throw the money away and there's that quote from John Wanamaker which I think is a real shame you know 50% of my marketing works the problem is I don't know which 50% and so part of what we're trying to eradicate here is is that concept um, you know I want you to know what parts of your marketing work works and what um, what I found was no matter how whatever level I was talking to whether it be from a, a creating a marketing plan together or just creating an ad that this framework would this was the process so it can be applied from the highest level such as a marketing plan down to just creating a new church bulletin ad and we would then walk through the uh, from the mindset into identifying the market and then uh, what type of message are we going to create then at that point then what is the best media for us to get that message out to that market that we've selected and then two sometimes where I saw things fall down were the mechanics of of actually just getting it done and and then another big problem is a lot of ads don't have any metrics to them they're not being measured so what um, what I found was uh, that it's quite simple to to add certain elements into your ad to make sure that you can at least track some portion of it or have a way better uh, a way better better ability to track that ad than uh, than just having a phone number or the URL going to your homepage and then to the the final part was 
uh, like getting it done. We got to get this done and we got to put this thing into motion and, and then let's kind of keep this almost into a perpetual motion. And then you can see that it, what, what happens is it cycles. Uh, just seeing here that some people are having uh, some issues getting the the down the download. Just make sure that um, that there's no capitals in uh, the seven M checklist dot PDF. So it should all be um, just all lowercase there for the for the main part of the URL funeral marketing blueprint. Uh, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, that can be capitalized or or not. And then, as I've been putting this together, uh, the result has been this huge mind map here. And I'm not sure if you use mind maps or not, but I find that it's a great way to uh, create documents, uh, especially um, to record your thoughts. And then you can kind of expand them and and retract them, and um, and and what I'm doing actually coming up here in the new year in Las Vegas, you've probably seen some of the the ads about uh, the Be a Funeral Marketing Rockstar event, and what that at that event. Uh, so the Rockstar thing is the theme of the event, but the the content is going to be. Uh, the complete blueprint here that I'm going to present and everyone will get a um, get this kind of in a poster size here um, but what I'll do is I'm going to just hop over now and and just give you a, a quick little overview of how that works and then we're going to get into uh, the checklist so here is um, mind map software that uh, I use um, this one's free it's called free mind and it takes a little bit of, of working, but you can see that um, uh, what happens is you can just click on these items and it kind of, it then will expand. And so here are some of the things from a mindset perspective that that I would want to cover and that I just do for my own marketing. And and I'm, I'm thinking of this even uh, even though I, when we're going through the process of this with a client, I may not, you know, be physically checking these off uh, on a piece of paper, but this is kind of how I go through the process. And then these continue to expand and, and, um, and then you can retract them. So, uh, you know, in the mindset, I want to, first of all, get some, the strategic thinking, you know, so what are the competitive advantages to some, basic philosophies, uh, a lot of mistakes that are commonly made. So I want to keep those on the top of my mind. Um, also too, I, I lean towards the marketing legends. Um, I'm not sure if you've read some of uh, my uh, articles. There's a, a new one coming out about, um, about Claude Hopkins, who was a hundred years ago, he was um, a marketer and he has a book called Scientific Advertising. So uh, there's a couple of, uh, you'll see some articles shortly about how we can apply those teachings today just like i think we can look back a hundred years to what um the the our great our grandparents our great grandparents were going through when they were for when they were undertakers and um, also to this is just a reminder that we always want to be testing and we want to be tracking our our ads so we know what ads are working uh, then we go into the market and what i what i found is we we need to sometimes again we need to focus on um, who are we trying to attract now um, are we going after a specific what I call the death cycle and and it's similar to the like the life cycle but uh, you know is this going to be a, a pre need ad is it more of a near need ad or is it uh, an at need ad that we're that we're creating and is that the market or are we going after certain demographics whether it be uh, age or, or that type of thing, um, or a, a specific area of your town or city. And then is there a specific persona that uh, we're going after? So are these people that are you know, pretty well already committed to us? Um, are, they, are they just looking for the absolute best price? Uh, or are they value seekers? And we would mark and market to these people differently. And then once we identify 
who we're going to mark it to, we want to uh, make sure that we craft the right message. And this is uh, more of just resources that I've put together because uh, there's a quote from um, a marketer called Dan Kennedy, and it's called Message to Market Match. So we want to make sure that the message that we're creating is a complete match to the market that we're going after. And uh, these are just items here that we that I like to go through to make sure that we're covering all of these bases. And it doesn't mean that we use all of them. Again, these are just kind of resources in the process. Then after we've we know that our message and we've crafted the message, then we're going to choose what media are we going to use. So is this going to be a print ad? Is it going to be direct mail? Is it going to be on our website? Online advertising, online video, broadcast media such as TV or radio. Uh, are we doing that through press releases, social media, email marketing? Is it events or sponsorship or, or that type of thing? And uh, And sometimes too, we can, as we're going through this process, we can then um, maybe, you know, maybe we're creating a direct mail campaign, but we can also take that same content and uh, add that, you know, adjust it a little bit and add that to our website. So I'm a big fan of repurposing the information because if we go through the process, um, you know, we've probably thought about this marketing material in depth then. We want to then, uh, we just don't want to set it aside. We can use it in other areas. And then there's the mechanics, and this is just kind of the stuff, the boring stuff, but it just needs to get done. Um, where are we getting our information? So uh, I like to aggregate information, whether it's through Google or Google Alerts or um, uh, like a, a dashboard of information such as, uh, or like Google Reader subscribing to blogs and just getting that initial research. Uh, you know, and then probably the most important one is creating a campaign. Uh, and I think sometimes we stop short at just creating the ad and we, uh, you know, and then we're kind of get tired and lazy and we, okay, well then we'll just put the, we'll just put a, put a phone number there or add our, our URL and send them to the homepage. Well, then what happens is we, we can't, we're not tracking the ad. There's inconsistency in the, um, the message that we're that we're sending them through uh one you know one of the th neat things r with all the work that i've done with google ads is just really learning how google operates so when someone search it performs a search in google uh and then you know google displays those ads at the top or on the left uh sorry on the top or the right and what Google's doing, they're actually, every time there's a search, and there's like 3 billion searches a day, they're performing this mini little auction. And what they're doing is they're saying, okay, who's, um, you know, who's bidding on this search, on these search keywords? Um, and then they're going to, then they're saying, okay, now who, who's paying the most is one of the criteria. But they're also looking at who's sending them to the best landing page. And that has, the that the landing page the landing page's information is the most congruent to the search so if they're searching for uh, cremation in victoria uh, and someone you know maybe a traditional funeral home has bid on those terms and then sends them to a page either their home page that doesn't talk about cremation because they're still trying to um, you know hopefully have people choose burial uh, that's going to get a lower quality score from Google's perspective to the to the person that creates a page that um, talks about Victoria cremation because then there's more congruency there. So, uh, and I think you know Google Google makes more money than our entire industry. So um, I think it's okay to to learn from them that they believe because they want to make sure that the, all their clients are happy and they have two sets of clients. They have the publishers who are placing the ads and they have the people using their search engine who, and only 3% of the time they click on those ads, but that 3% actually makes up like 96% of Google's revenue. So, and Google wants 
doesn't want to lose those people to Bing or Yahoo by you know only going to the uh, the highest bidder. Uh, yeah, the highest bid is is important, but it's not the most important thing. They want to make sure that their their client gets the best user experience. So all that being said, we really need to kind of think through the process of our ad. So, okay, great, they've responded to our ad. Now, are, how are we gonna continue on that conversation? And do we have a plan for offline of how we're gonna um, take that lead or that prospect and hopefully sign them up as a pre-need client or win the first call if it's an at-need call. Uh, then other things too that are kind of more autopilot or can that are systems that uh, I like to put into place, um, you know, for SEO for our for our websites that every time there's a new obituary going up, there's new links being generated, uh, creating local expert status for yourself, uh, how how you can do that to be perceived as the most knowledgeable person about funerals and cremations in your area. Uh, and then also too, just having a, a game plan for online reputation management and also to how to cultivate relationships, uh, both online and offline. So, but those are kind of processes and, and once they get in, put into place, you know, just like as an example, Rotary, you, you, you kind of meet once a week and kind of once you commit, you're just going there week after week after week after week. Uh, and if you don't, you got to kind of make that up or, or what have you. So. Uh, a lot of that, you know, if we can apply that same mindset to some of our other things that we do and just put them in a bit of a system, you're going to build a huge online presence and really dominate your space. And again, it just, we're just trying to work some of the things out in the beginning. And then again, you just follow the system afterwards. Then we're going to want to, uh, Test things with them with metrics such as Google Analytics, Webmaster Tools, tracking phone numbers, even using coupons and certificates. Um, one one example is we when people download information uh, from a website, we'll actually uh, include uh, a, an additional page, and that that page then can be used for um, promoting new products. Uh, or introducing them to new products. You know, it doesn't need to be cheesy like a coupon or a certificate. It can be done in a, um, it can be done in a, in a manner that, that isn't very intrusive. And, and as an example, um, when you downloaded the, um, the checklist, I included an additional page for the upcoming event in, um, in February. So just as an example of how this can work, um, and it doesn't have to be that uh, bold or that in your face, but when people will print that off, they'll get that. And uh, now you've actually got something, you know, someone who's been searching for something online, maybe they're searching for funeral information and they've downloaded some of your information. And then here's another sheet with these additional items that they may never have heard of before. And since they've never heard of some of these things before, because as we know, people, uh, you know, they only experience a funeral, whether it's every, like intimately every five, seven, 10, 15 years, or whatever the number is, it kind of conflicting, but whatever that time, if we look back even seven years ago, you know, there, there was just the beginning of online obits, just the beginning of, uh, video tributes and things like that. And, you know, those are now commonplace and we have all these other new technologies and new offerings that um, that are more recent in the last three or four four years. So, um, you know, this is just a uh, an indirect way of educating them. And again, that's just as an example. And then you just want to make sure that you track, uh, just have a worksheet and or a spreadsheet that tracks all of your your metrics so that when, you know, because people say, oh, you know, we're going to, our yellow page ad isn't, isn't getting us any business and we're going to pull out of the yellow page ad. And, you know, that, you know, I, I agree, it's way less effective than they used to be. But sometimes it's just the, the ad just looks like a billboard um, about the funeral home and, and the ads written in, 
in a manner that's more about the funeral home than about the person who's just died and and so it comes down to ROI like you know even if you're spending a thousand dollars or two even two thousand dollars a month on yellow page advertising if you get three calls a month because of it then you know depending on your market you know that might be worth it and um, you know because there's still going to be you know uh, the few people that may use it I know most of the people don't um, but we'll uh, we'll see here in the next couple of years but in the meantime you know if um, if that's the case and you may have heard me talk about you know figuring out what your number is and what I mean by that is how much are you willing to pay to get a new call so if if there was a vending machine that had funerals in it that you know people that needed a funeral home and you could just go there uh, anytime and just put in 500 bucks and you know, out comes the first call you know would you would you do that you know and at what price would you do that all day long so if you can start tracking if you're tracking say your yellow page ad and you're think you're thinking you know what we actually get four calls a month and we're paying a thousand bucks and you know our number is you know I'm willing to pay 500 bucks per call if it's a say a funeral um, and here I'm only paying 250 um, you know for those four calls uh, at a thousand bucks for the month uh, I'll totally do that and uh, you know and then and then year after year you just need to keep on tracking it and then motion so um, one thing that I think you really need to th think about is okay what's gonna happen these are kind of all the activities with the reception of the leads um, how is that going to happen because I think you know we put in all this effort into marketing and um, and then you know they're not going to a specific phone number you know maybe they're getting uh, you know just going to the front desk uh, where you know maybe you're using a specific number and if you know if someone's phoning this number a death has occurred uh, and you can treat that phone call a little bit differently um, or maybe it's a mail-in, you know, if it's a, a pre need ad, then you can mail that in, you know, someone's mailed that in, how are you gonna, what process are you gonna do to follow that up? Uh, is, you know, do you have a pre need rep looking after that right away? Or does that just get put off to the side? Because part of the problem that I see is that people, you know, they do all this effort in their marketing and then they don't, then they kind of forget about, hey, well, we, maybe have to still close this call on the phone and uh, and you know all your marketing's worked up to that point so you want to make sure that you can uh, that you can get you can close the deal and uh, you know I'm just using sales and marketing talk because that's just um, you know really that's the way it is I know that we we kind of tiptoe and prance around that stuff uh, in front of families and and I'm totally you know I, I do, would do the same but you know we, we when we're talking about marketing we just have to talk directly about it and and uh, so I'm not gonna mince any words here hopefully that's okay with you and then the other ones that are here are just making sure that you've you've got the system going and what are you gonna do uh, what are the first 10 things are you gonna do um, what are then what are you going to do after the, the first month what's going to happen in a year from now that type of thing so that's just a brief overview again it is um, you know when we expand this out it is um, going on here you can see that it's um, it's pretty big and this thing is it just continually grows so I keep on adding new things as as I process things or um, discover new things I keep adding this to the to the map here so we'll uh, just put that aside for now and uh, now I'm sure that there's um, you know some folks out there that have um, you have have gone to business school and they're saying like hey Rob you're you know talking about the seven M's of marketing but you know there's what about the four P's of marketing because that was the first kind of process or model 
and uh, which was product price promotion and placement and uh, and then others have like done spin-offs and you know so there's the four C's that are customer oriented consumer cost communication and convenience well you, those are kind of more big kind of big big idea thinking um, what I wanted to present today is a tool for you so that when you tackle your your advertising you're going to be able to go through this process and uh, so if you want to get your your checklist out we'll kind of go through uh, we'll go through the checklist and um, hopefully it will um, you know it can help you the next time you create any form of marketing so the first one and I've you know I've got the kind of the fill in the blanks here so um, think like a marketer and uh, I will think like a marketer and I will not shortcut the marketing process so I talked about that a little bit uh, before of making sure that we don't uh, you know we're not in just this rush that we're gonna see it right through we're gonna create a campaign and not just an ad that we send off to the church the next mindset item is what client family benefit am I going to showcase in my ad? So sometimes we start talking about all of our own features. Um, so as an example, if you talk about, um, you know, we've built a new on-site crematorium, uh, you know, and that's not a big deal for anyone unless you let them know, well, how does, what's the benefit for the family? So that the, ben the client benefit would be the, we have an on-site crematorium so that we can quickly um, return the cremated remains to you and also the security that um, you know that your loved one never leaves our facilities as an example so that's what you would um, that would be the client family benefit for you having a, a new on-site crematorium same thing with a with a reception center so for um, you know convenience and more people being able to attend um, and this one I'll spend a little bit of time on this one um, you does this campaign help me win the ZMOT at the kitchen table so I've got to explain a couple things here uh, the ZMOT is the um, zero this is a Google term the zero moment of truth and um, what that what they're saying there really they're trying to identify the exact instant that the decision is made so um, you know they've there's been other moments of truth uh, out there where you're at the grocery store and you're looking at uh, you know buying some cereal and you know is it gonna be Cheerios or Fruit Loops and you're you're kind of looking and and you know, as you reach your hand to the Fruit Loops, because oh, Fruit Loops taste great, but I know they're awful for me. Um, haven't had them for a long time. But you know, when you've kind of reached for that that um, that box of cereal, that was the zero moment of truth there. So, and that can apply to when someone is, um, you know, there's a point where okay, someone has died there, um, and they're I believe most of the time sitting around the kitchen table and so if they're if they're sitting around the kitchen table and you know I know this because I've I don't know how many hundreds of house uh, appointments I went on when you know in during my 10 years of pre-need and I found that when when I'd arrive a lot of times there would be like two or three or four piles of information at at the kitchen table or at the dining room table you know and these you know these folks at all you know at that time asked you know for us to mail them a package and and you know then you know I was following up with them so then got the house appointment and and there would be a point where you know all this information is there and are they when do they make that final decision to yes we're gonna go with your funeral home so now we don't always have that ability to be there at their kitchen or dining room table. 
So how do we win that zero, zero moment of truth? And, you know, especially when they're all sitting around the kitchen table. So when you're crafting your campaign, you want to make sure that the end result is, is this going to, you know, the, all the effort that I'm putting into this, everything that I do, and is it going to help me win the client, the client family at that moment? Now you can, you know, you don't have to do everything in the ad, but the ad is just the start of, of the campaign. And maybe it's, you know, uh, just a small ad, but then the ad is then taking them to your website and then they've downloaded some information from there that you've made accessible to them. And now you, you're being represented at their kitchen table with your information. And so has that ad that you created way back going to help you in that circumstance? First of all, if it was effective, they've at least got your stuff, then hopefully the rest of your uh, marketing uh, materials, your marketing assets that you have on your website or that you mail out are going to then continue them through that process of getting to know you, getting to like you, getting to trust you. So those are just three things that you can check off as you're going through the mindset part. The next one, market. What part of the death cycle is my target market in? So is this going to be a pre-need play? Is it uh, at need or is it near need? And what I noticed in my um, time with in the pre-need space as well as looking after websites, is a lot of the pre-need inquiries that come through a funeral home website are kind of more in this near need window. So maybe when you're creating, uh, you know, they're not they're not the kind of the estate planning mindset. They're like, hey, I've either got, you know, there's either six months, six weeks, six days, six hours, or six minutes to live. Uh, whoever's looking at this information, and um, how how am I going to walk them through that process? So uh, that's just, you know, that could be, you know, your for your pre need pages on your website that part of the death cycle would be near need on your, um, you know, if it's a yellow page ad, just go right for the at need. You don't need any other, you know, the only people that are going to go there are people that need a funeral home. If they need directions or something, you know, let them fumble through the yellow pages. Um, but you want to, but if someone, you know, if there's a death, you want to know that, okay, I'm writing this ad, this ad is going to be placed in front of people when probably a death has occurred. So we're gonna, we're gonna have that complete tone at that time. Who is my one target market for this campaign? And, you know, I see, I, although I don't see them as much anymore, um, you know, serving all face. And you know what? No one is all face. There's no one is, uh, you know, even the Unitarians who kind of say that they they make up all these different religions, uh, you know, they're still Unitarians. So um, when you, there's a saying that goes, um, when you try to be all things to all people, you're you're nothing to no one. So one of the benefits with with advertising now, we can um, instead of broadcasting, we can narrow cast and you'll pick different markets and and these aren't complete um you know from the ground up new campaigns for every little market but just as a quick example uh if you're if you have your church bulletin ads instead of just having the church bulletin ad look like a business card you know have it say so if you're in the catholic um uh you know the parish newsletter then you're going to have an ad that talks about um, Catholics and funerals. And um, you could say, you know, you could even talk about cremation for Catholics as an example, if you wanted to. Um, but then you'd have a call to action there that would then say, um, uh, you know, to, you know, to download our planning guide, go to uh, yourfuneralchapel.com forward slash Catholic. And that that's going to do two things. One thing, 
the word Catholic is going to jump out at them because they, you know, they're really uh, committed to being a Catholic. And, and so just out of curiosity, they might go there. Plus two, you're now going to be able to track that ad or that series of ads that maybe go into all the Catholic uh, church bulletins, as an example. So then you just replicate that process for um, for the for the Jews, for the Baptists, for um, whoever else, and you could even do it for uh, that same thing for an ad in your Rotary program. Uh, maybe there's something going on at uh, with the Shriners or the Freemasons, and then you can direct them to a page that talks specifically to them. So if you're able to target one market, you're then able to have a better conversation with them because you already know something about them. Hopefully that makes sense. And then when you're creating your ad, visualize the actual person from this market. And when you're writing the ad or when you're thinking about the ad, write to them directly. So, uh, you know, people will call this a, a persona or a um, avatar. And, and so you want to be writing, and especially too, on a, on a very conversational, um, personal level. So uh, as an example, as I'm having a conversation here with uh, dozens of people online, and what, um, you know, I'm not saying all you out there, I'm, I'm saying I'm trying to have I'm trying to have this as a one-on-one -on -one conversation because that's how you're receiving it. So uh, even though your ad uh, might be seen by thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people, uh, it's only being, when it's being received, it's being received by one person. So you want, it's better to have that conversational using words like you and your uh, instead of talking in the third person or, or that type of thing. And that in itself could really, um, you know, even your, say your yellow page ad, um, th you know, that is being received by one person. Now moving on to your message. Am I focusing on the benefits and not the features? You know, so the features could be state of the art, um, catering kitchen. You know what, that doesn't, you know, okay, it sounds like you spent a lot of money on it, great. But, uh, you know, I'd rather know that the rece on-site reception center uh, for, um, you know, our on-site reception center so all of the attendees of the funeral can attend and share more stories about your loved one. So that's just spinning it from the features, uh, which we get hung up on and, and I fight it too. Um, to to the client and and to the benefit that they will receive you know the old saying of uh, you know people buy a watch just to know the time they don't need to know how the watch is built but you know watchmakers are so proud of how that watch works that we want to say how it's built and you know that's just a metaphor for lots of things whether we're talking about um, our caskets, our funeral coaches, um, we get hung up on our features and uh, we really need to separate ourselves from that and focus on the benefits to the client. What do I want them to do after reading the ad or the campaign? So do I have a process of okay, here's what's the next logical step that they're, that I want them to take. Um, you know, I'm not just going to, this isn't a, an image building exercise or a branding building exercise because, you know what, there's just so much noise out there. It's just, you know, a waste of money and you're never going to be able to track it. So if, you know, what's the step? So if it's that church bulletin, I want them to, you know, that... That little, uh, like my grandmother at the Catholic parish, you know, I'd want her to, uh, you know, take that home and go up, go to her computer and go to that page and maybe read that page or watch the video that's on there 
or maybe then download a PDF uh, for some other information. And again, with that, you could have maybe, maybe it's a little brochure on um, Catholics in cremation. Well, then the, the final page could be just a one page planning form that they can fill out and mail into you. And that's just the one step closer to um, securing that prearrangement. Or at least if they filled that out, uh, you know, maybe down the road, someone's going to, you know, when that, when that person dies, they'll bring that into the funeral home. Will the prospective client family be better informed after seeing my ad or campaign? So are, are we educating them through the process? What, how is, how is that working? Are, are they, are we just saying how great we are and we've been in business for X number of years and X number of generations and we've got air conditioned facilities or are they going to be enlightened by some of the information that we've shared with them? And when, and if we do that, we're actually going to be walking them through getting to know us, getting to like us and getting to trust us. Because if we provide helpful information, instead of just a bunch of sales stuff, they're going to be, they're going to be a lot more comfortable with us and a lot more um, informed of when they make that decision. So, um, you know, again, another term from, you know, marketing would be pre-qualifying them. And, you know, so when they, when they've made that call and you know what it's like when someone's, you know, you know, some, someone's been on your website and they've kind of really dug in and they say, you know, you ask them this question and you don't know, and they'll say, Oh, well, you, you know what? I was on your website and I saw this, um, you know, I saw the, uh, you know, those, um, tribute blankets. So we want one of those. And you're like, uh, oh, wow, that was easy. So, you know, you can, if you educate them through the process, your arrangements are going to be easier and better because they're going to be more informed. And, you know, just, again, this, you know, being transparent here, I'm walking you through this, this um, free webinar so that, uh, you know, I can educate you on, on this. Hopefully after you hear you know, you're hearing my voice for an hour or so and uh, you're getting more comfortable with me and, and eventually maybe working together or attending one of my conferences or, uh, you know, becoming a client. And, you know, so that's that's why I do these. And, um, you know, more so than just sending ads all the time. Media. What is the best form of media to use in this campaign? So is it going to be online offline or uh, broadcast media or you know maybe e even drilling down further is it going to be uh, newspaper print yellow page uh, church bulletins uh, or is it going to be online whether it's a, a banner ad a google adwords or something on your website is there a specific publication or list that is best suited for your target market so the reason why I bring this up is that, and you know, some people are going to say, well, you know what? We're not allowed to buy lists. You know, we can't, we can't send address mail. We can't cold call and all that. And you know what? That's, that's okay. But there's ways of, of around getting, um, there's ways around that. Um, if, but you just have to be a little creative. Obviously you don't want to, um, uh, you know, go against your regulations, but, um, you know, if there's a specific publication, so, you know, that could be a church bulletin, uh, you know, that's a specific, specific publication or, you know, the, uh, again, the, like the rotary, um, program, if there's an event and once a year you, uh, you know, they, they have that, you know, that all those people are Rotarians. Um, you know, on another hand, if you want to market to a specific group of people and, um, you can buy marketing lists. You know, marketing lists now are have so much more detail. Now, I know that you're not allowed to send, or you may not be allowed to send addressed mail to the person, but you can find, you could get the list of addresses and just leave the address or the name off of the envelope, you know, and just, um, you know, have it, 
you know, a compelling, you know, so important homeowner information. And then you have that person's uh, uh, address and, uh, you know, postal code and, and that type of thing. But if you're, so maybe you want to target uh, a new market where you're thinking of expanding a new business. Um, and and also too, the, the po post office service can, can also give you uh, areas that may, you know, from, you know, that are bulk mail that have, um, you know, some have a higher rate of people in older ages, etc. But when we're talking about our marketing, maybe it might sound a little expensive in the beginning, but if you get great return on it, then you may want to do that over and over and over again. And the last one, can this campaign be applied or repurposed to another media channel? So if you've created a uh, an online ad, can that, and especially with, um, say with Google AdWords, so you've hopefully you've been testing your ads and you find that one headline works way better than another headline. Well, you could take then that same information and uh, put that into uh, one of those print advertising, whether it, maybe it's into your newspaper, maybe you expand it a little bit, but you now know what headline actually gets the most attention and you can, um, instead of just going right to the print and kind of guessing what the headline should be, you could pre-test it with the with your Google AdWords. Um, on, a, on another note, if you maybe create a, a direct mail sales letter that you're going to send out uh, from on a pre-need basis, well, that letter could then also be a script for an online video that you put up on the website. The mechanics. So is there uh, information or research that you're gathering that's the most relevant for your prospects? So uh, are you g getting this information, uh, statistics? Um, you know, even though people don't want to get beat down by statistics, they still play an important role. And the more specific you are, um, the best, um, the more specific you are, the better your ad's going to, to be. So the, uh, in McCall, with McCall's, we created this, um, we did this big split test. So we sent 20 or 30,000 mail pieces and we ran four, um, separate pieces that went, you know, so, uh, if there was 20,000, 5,000 of each went out. And the one that produced the most, uh, the, the, that sorry produced the best response that got the most uh, pre needs was one that we had um, you know we didn't lead with a picture of the funeral home or you know the logo we led with a headline that said something like um, you know what do uh, what do eighty one point six percent of Victorians um, forget to do that can really help their families or something like that. So we used something very specific because that was, we just, you know, went through our database of thousands and thousands of calls. And, um, when I first started at McCall's, it wasn't too long after that, that we created a database. So we could, we could track if how many people, uh, had, you know, when that, uh, if you know the term preeny delivered, so, you know, is, uh, you know, is this new first call was this had this person pre needed or not? Now, the uh, you know usually it's around say twenty five percent. So and in this case it was like nineteen or eighteen point three percent. So we reversed it and said, okay, well if eighteen point three percent of the people do this, then eighty one point seven percent of the people don't. So that was very specific when we use the term Victorians, which is again, Im important to them. And, you know, we're providing some, um, that information f for them in a specific manner so that they relate to them and it catches their attention. It's curiosity. But instead of, again, that was all about them. Nothing wasn't about how great the funeral home was. Is the best person creating the, uh, is the best person creating the assets? 
um, whether it's uh, writing the, the copy, the ad copy, writing the words, um, producing the video, or producing the graphics. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think that we, you know, we try to cheap out and maybe we get someone internally to create a logo or, um, you know, and it looks kind of weird and they, you know, they did it, they, you know, not even on Photoshop, they've done it in something else. And, you know, now, nowadays there's just so many resources out there such as, um, you know, 99 designs where you can uh, get logos created by a number of different people. Uh, or you can, uh, if you've started to study, uh, you know, writing, uh, writing copy for you, you know, for your ads or just having a, and even by the end of this webinar, you're going to have a, a much better understanding of, of how to write ads and how to position those, you know, your words. Um, so what I'm getting at too, is I think one of the, one of the biggest mistakes is, um, marketing by committee. So what that means is, you know, someone then creates it, then it gets passed around to a bunch of people who, um, you know, are, are way, way too close to the business and they'll go, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. Or, or something, you know, something like that. So if, if you're the owner and you've spent all the time marketing, um, don't share it with anyone. I know that may not sound great, but, um, you know, the only maybe have, uh, someone on staff who's a great proofreader, just only for grammatical, uh, and spelling that you, you'd want that checked, but otherwise, um, you know, keep it to who's got the knowledge because, um, you know, when you start to test, uh, and in the book, uh, scientific advertising by Claude Hopkins that I referred to earlier, he has this quote that he says, um, let the thousands, and he's talking about testing ads, let the thousands, um, dictate what the millions will buy. So he did a lot of, um, direct mail, direct response, like mail order advertising, but he says that you don't know enough people, you don't know a big enough sample to give you an honest answer. So again, if we're talking about that, um, uh, that direct mail piece that we sent to 30, 30,000 people in Victoria, well, you know, I, I don't know, and I know a lot of people, but I don't know a thousand people that I could go to, you know, it'd be kind of way too time consuming to actually share that, um, that those ad pieces with to see if they were, um, viable. And, and that would be the sample that I would need to make, you know, because the people, if we're doing it to five people, 10 people, 20 people in our, in our little circle of friends there, that's not going to be a big enough sample, uh, to give you an honest, an honest answer. So you want to make sure that you're not marketing by committee and also you want to be doing it by who's got um who's the best at it and did you create or follow your system for your campaign distribution so even this checklist here is now you have a new system to follow if you want to follow it and that and inst and what i'm trying to get at here is instead of just being in that rat race of like, oh no, the yellow page person's coming tomorrow. I got to whip an ad together. Oh, I don't have time. Uh, you know what? We'll just run last year's ad. And <laughs> I'm sure that happens. I know that that happens a lot. And, uh, or changing it on a whim without going through some of the other things. So just make sure that you follow a little bit of a system and a process and then document it. Just put it in a Word document or what I use is a, a Google document so I can add little processes or uh, on bigger things, I'll create like that mind map where I can then, you know, add little things to a section and then I can collapse or collapse or expand those sections as needed. So try to create a little system or a process that you go through when you're doing this instead of just that reactive marketing. Metrics. Can I test this ad or campaign against another ad? So meaning, can I split test it? And um, again, it takes a little bit more effort, whether it's Google AdWords, you just need to create a second ad, or as we did in, in that test for um, the pre-need um, direct mail piece, 
uh, you know, it, it took a little bit of time and, and the printer gave us a little bit of grief, but you know, I said, well, if our, if our, um, marketing isn't, um, you know, if it's not work, w working, if I don't know if it's working or how well it could be working, then I might stop altogether. So I think you better, you know, uh, you know, appease me here and so you're going to have to set up four plates to run that stuff off. And that, you know, that was it. Do you want the business or not? So, uh, you want to be able to, to have that, to, if you can, to test certain things. And, you know, we, we there's also a point too, where you can, um, you know, you could try to test any, everything in the, you know, the, you know, unless probably, unless you're SCI, you don't have the, the scope and the number of people coming to your website to test if, um, you know, some little minute thing. So we can, we can test certain things that are in our control and that we have a big enough sample for. And, and then other things we just need to, uh, learn by, you know, some of the masters of what, you know, what human behavior things work better than others. So we have to do a little bit of a combination because we, we are dealing with a smaller little uh, piece of the pie. How can I track this ad? So am I tracking it with a specific URL? Am I tracking it with a QR code uh, or maybe a tracking phone number? So instead of, again, instead of just sending them to the home page, you want to send them to a specific uh, landing page because since you know that, hey, I'm targeting this one specific market, then I'm going to send them to a specific page that continues that conversation. So if I, if I know I'm talking to Baptist, then I'm going to continue talking to Baptist when they land on that page. Uh, a QR code. When, if you're using a QR code for people to scan with their mobile phone, make it really easy for them uh, to, first of all, to scan it. And also don't send them to a regular web page unless your website is uh, completely mobile friendly. So, uh, because what happens is, I, and I see this happen a lot, people go, oh, well, we'll use a QR code. And they just, you know, the first thing is they just send them to the homepage and they're not even tracking, they're not even tracking it. The second is um, that, you know, they maybe send them to a specific page, but it's not it's not mobile friendly. So one thing that, uh, and this is just through testing that I found out and I'm going to be doing from now on is every time that I send someone to a, uh, a page that has, and we're just, I'm just trying to get caught up here because I've noticed that the, um, when I've added a video onto a landing page from a, like a mobile page where people have come from using a QR code, um, you know, it, it may not be easy for them to read, but a lot of um, mobile phones will pick up that video, especially if it's a YouTube embedded embedded video, and they'd be able to watch that right on their phone. So that's one element that I would recommend to have on that page. And then to use a tracking phone number if you if you can. Um, I, I'm actually in negotiating with a company to try to get to make this really easy so you can get, you know, for you know, whether it's going to be 20 or 30 bucks a month, um, there's going to be a, a tracking phone, phone number, uh, that gets forwarded to your phone, you know, your regular phone number. Um, but all the detail, you know, we can track it. We'll know the length of time that they're on the call and also the call will be recorded. So you can, um, you can use that for, uh, you know, just seeing if your staff is, um, how they are, uh, responding or, or that type of thing. And then uh, how easily, how will I easily get res the results from this campaign? So this is another thing that sometimes, and you know what, honestly, I struggle with it too. Sometimes we, you know, we try to put all this tracking in place, but then it's too hard to get the results. So when you're, when you're putting this together, don't make it too hard on yourself. You know, if there's at least one metric you can get out of it and <clears throat> you've set it up through uh, uh, Google Analytics and I've got a, um, a video on my website about that that I'll send in a follow-up email that uh, you know you how you can tag URLs so that you know exactly where people came from 
and then so just when you're in there once a month you can <clears throat> you can see how your ads running where it's not um, you know having to phone the marketing agency and getting them to like pull a manual re uh, report or that type of thing it's um, you know it can be just you know you just end up banging your <laughs> banging your head on the wall so motion <clears throat> excuse me so who's in charge of seeing this campaign completely implemented like and I, I sometimes I see this too where uh, you know we're trying to get uh, whether it's a pre pro uh, plan out or uh, you know are we trying are we waiting to get graphics uh, are we you know are there photos or, or what are we waiting for and then um, you know so who's gonna put that all together who's gonna see that from the beginning to the end um, doesn't necessarily have to be you but someone has to follow your process right through uh, and get it implemented because uh, you know the longer you're not you know advertising or creating that content the it's not doing you any good while it's still in production so you want to make sure that someone is in charge to see that all the way through uh, has the entire campaign process been tested and I see this sometimes and uh, once once or twice I've been guilty of this too where I'm rushing to get something out the door and I you know put a tracking link but then I don't um, you know I don't actually put the tracking code in the tracking link so I'm not able to track it you know the good thing about that is that I can always go back and um, uh, add the tracking code back in but you know from the call to action to the URL or the phone number to the online form does that entire process work has someone has someone gone through to test it so that when someone enters their email the e the form gets filled out and you're you know the right people are notified about that lead and then this is the big thing that I think a lot of people forget is the you know kind of the offline like once this comes offline how are the leads going to be handled so it's great that you get um, you know you get these leads coming through your inbox but you know, we've done tests uh, of nine, no, ten different markets uh, on asking for um, funeral pricing information and uh, through email or through a web form. And I was shocked at how poor the response was. Um, you know, there was only a few people that responded within the first hour. And, you know, the email stated that, you know, hey, my... Uh, you know my mom's dying in hospice and you know I just need to get some information done but I don't want to talk to anyone at the moment can you send me some pricing information and yeah I get responses back by um, oh um, we'd rather explain our prices over the phone oh you idiot I just told you that I can't phone my mom's dying in hospice you know so it just just shocked me anyway uh, just on that note um, uh, here's a quick tip uh, res have a have a form that you're going to send back like a um, a little script text you know that you've typed out and you know have that ready to go uh, so when you get one of those emails you or the secretary or whoever's getting info at your funeralchapel.com can immediately respond and uh, and then and this is this is the bonus at the end of the day so you know if this has happened either early in the morning or even say like at one o'clock in the afternoon at the end of the day five o'clock even six o'clock send another email and you know have it more of a personal a personal uh, tone to it to say uh, I just wanted to follow up because uh, I know you know there's so much information and you're, you're probably overwhelmed with information um, if you have if new questions have um, arisen since uh, we since I responded to you please you know, please hit reply and let me know. And here's my cell phone number if you have any other, um, if you have any other questions, because you're, you know, a whole bunch of things are going on there. You're actually, um, you know, you're treating them like a friend because only friends kind of give their cell phone numbers out, and you're really elevating that, um, uh, that them getting to know you, getting to like you, getting to trust you. 
but uh, you know back to the final point here is just make sure that you have a process so you know okay when these leads come in we're doing this new campaign this is how it's supposed to be handled and you just want a system in place you don't want those things sitting on any desk anywhere so then at the bottom of the worksheet here I just wanted to um, give you like a final checklist for kind of the six six things that to create a compelling ad now there's you know there's going to be some times where um, not all six are going to fit but generally speaking if you follow these things you are going to compel them and you know, I'm not saying how to create a, you know a, cl a call winning ad where uh, you know we just want to compel them to take the next step so and and when they're searching for something uh, or if there's if they're getting bombarded with all these other messages how can we stand out and how can we compel them to take the next step so that they can get into our process so the first one uh, again that you've selected a single target market uh, and does your ad look like valuable information and not just a big ad not just like a big you know logo on the top or a picture of your building on the top you, you want to um, you know maybe have like a like almost like a newspaper headline and almost like a advertorial versus a big um, display ad uh, then the next one is the headline engaging is it client family focus so again that um, you know that that headline that was uh, you know what do 81.7 percent of uh, Victorians uh, fail to do that um, could really help their family you know that that wasn't like I wasn't saying lock in your funeral prices today at our funeral home who's been around for 100 years it was all about them and uh, you know things that were it was engaging and it was client family focused is your copy of your ad conversational so you're talking to one person you're using terms like you and your uh, instead of um, especially not in the third person uh, and and again you've probably heard me you know say this many times but people make arrangements with people they're not making arrangements with logos or buildings or funeral coaches or anything so the more conversational that we can be the more that we have this interact this interaction with them and this could be you know whether it's um, a direct mail letter or whether it's an email that you're sending out to someone have you offered something of value have you educated them in the process and you know is that going to then compel them to to the final point of taking a specific call to action so back to the um, you know if we're talking about the Catholics and cremation then you know you were you're saying um, you know download this free resource that is um, that talks that talks about the uh, options of um, cremation or burial for uh, for Catholics and uh, and again that's just an example uh, and then you know go to this website at your funeral forward slash Catholic or Catholic options or something like that and then they get to that page and then you know there's some more dialogue there maybe there's a little video of you just being conversational uh, maybe it's just a little slideshow of four or five different things just like this little uh, webinar just PowerPoint slides and then ask them again to you know download something so now that you've got um, some of your marketing assets on their kitchen table so that when they get to that zero moment of truth you're gonna have the best ability to um, win them over than your competitors so um, so one thing that I just like to um, just like to talk about briefly and I've got time for questions if anyone has any questions um, we, we are having our um, funeral rock stars event 
uh, in Las Vegas in February. And uh, here's a picture of the room. And uh, and I've what I've done is I've created a special, uh, so you can actually get $100 off the registration if you register uh, before the end of Friday this week. So it's the Black Friday um, event. And uh, I know there's lots of Black Friday sales going on out there, but uh, here's one where you can benefit. And uh, and also too, I think um, you know it's going to be the the difference. What we're going to what we're going to be doing at this event is actually going through the complete blueprint. We've we've gone through the seven M's today, but um, we're going to expand and and actually. One, and one of the questions here is, can we get a copy of the mind map? And the answer is yes, at the event, we're going to have, um, uh, everyone's gonna get a, a complete uh, copy of that so that you can, it can either be a wall reference or you can uh, you know, bring it out and lay it out on the desk when you need to go through your, um, go through your marketing or plan your marketing. So this event is gonna really go through this in a lot more detail, but not from just an ad perspective, but from your entire marketing plan perspective. So um, now I'm going to stay, stay on here for um, another 20 minutes or so until there's no more, until there aren't any additional questions. Um, but uh, when you when you do exit the webinar, there's just a quick three question survey that uh, um, that I'd like you to fill out if you could. Uh, just letting me know what you think of this concept and if you like that and um, and also to just to um, let me know if you'd want further information about the about the funeral rock stars event um, so one of the questions here is um, on uh, 99 designs so 99 designs there's this is called crowdsourcing and actually the um if you've seen the the full version of this uh funeral marketing rockstar ad um was actually designed through 99 designs so what happens and this can be done through logos or um, letterhead or um, web pages and uh, the concept is called crowdsourcing. So instead of just having one graphical designer giving you two or three uh, items, what happens is this is there's a contest, and you say, okay, I'm willing to spend a thousand bucks or eight hundred dollars for a new logo, uh, and uh, you know maybe twelve hundred dollars for a new logo and stationery and all that stuff. And instead of, and that would be the going rate if you went to a graphic designer in town. But what happens is people, there's a number of graphic designers submit entries and you can have uh, a number of, uh, you could have 20 or 30 different um, entries and you can, along the process, let them know, hey, if you, um, you know, hey, just, you know, make this change here. We like that, but we want this done a little bit differently. And it, um, and then at the end, you just pick the winner and you only pay the winner. So it's um, it's just great whether it in uh, whether it's for um, yeah your logos or maybe an advertisement. Um, now you know what you know you you kind of sketch out. When I did this one, I want I sketched out the different things that I wanted, very specific. I wanted to get their attention. I wanted to give them information. I had a very specific call to action. Uh, these ads that I placed in the different trade magazines. Um, all of them have uh, different QR codes, so I know what trade magazine they're coming from. And, you know, so from the mechanics part, we're in control of that. But from the design part, you know what, I uh, was following my own advice. I'm not a great um, graphic designer. I'll leave that to the pros. And um, and we had this really neat one uh, uh, created. Uh, yes, there will be a replay of this uh, of the webinar, so uh, I'll um, there sh shouldn't be. I don't think there's been any hiccups with the recording, so uh, shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. 
so here's a question about the event. So the event is a two-day event in Las Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel. It's going to be, you know what, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'm kind of the work hard, play hard type of person. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a great, uh, it's going to be a great educational uh, ses session. Uh, people that know me know that I um, over deliver. So I'm going to want to make sure that you leave there thinking that this was um, not only the best educational uh, event that you've been to, but also that, uh, you know what, we're going to have a lot of fun. We, we're going to have um, what I call a HEPS hot seat happy hour, where at the end of each day, they're going to roll in the, um, the, the bar cart and uh, there's going to be a happy hour where people can have, uh, you know, beer or wine or whatever. And uh, it's going to just be like this uncensored roundtable uh, hot seat where we can, you know, fire questions, put me on the spot or whatever. And uh, and then also, too, the uh, Hard Rock's got some great amenities there. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's I kind of miss, you know, especially when you're at some of the other events in Vegas. Uh, everyone gets scattered and they're all doing these other things. Uh, you know, at the Hard Rock, it's going to be great because you're going to be able to, uh, you know, there's just a couple venues and we'll kind of plan, hey, most of us are, you know, we're all going to go here. So, you know, join up with us later. And, um, you know, that's where lots of ideas get shared and, uh, uh, you know, just other concepts or, you know, sharing stories with peers and, and things like that. So, yeah, it's going to be um, like no other event. That's uh, that's all I'll say for, for now. Uh, okay, we've got another question here. Um Oh, about the uh, track, how to create a tracking URL. Uh, so let me bring that up here. Uh, I'll just. On um, so this one here, this article. 10 funeral home QR code uses um, in it it has links here to creating um, tracking QR codes So it kind of walks you through. I would read this, and even if you're not doing the QR code part, it does talk about creating the tracking URL. And um, and QR codes are um, free to make here. You just go to this Google, um, this Google uh, app here, and. And then uh, you can um, you can go up to four four hundred in size. So now, if you were to scan that, even right now, it should be able to do that. Don't want to cover everything else up. If you scan that, you can. You should be able to go to the. Uh, well, you will go to the Funeral Rock Stars website here. Now, I just as long as I didn't uh, make a mistake of putting in the. Uh, so 
if you scan that. And there's a YouTube video right at the top there. So again, I want to make sure that I practice what I preach. But that, uh, so just search for um, funeral, funeral home QR codes and uh, all that information is there. I'll just leave that up if, um, Here's, um, here's another question here. So please expand the, please expand on the concept of a persona. So um, I forget what, um, I think up in Canada here, it was the Bay. So the Bay is like, um, department store and I believe it's actually the um, the oldest company in North America because it used to be the the Hudson's Bay trading company um, and yeah like I don't know like 300 or 400 years old um, and the um, but they like in modern times they had um, they do this where they have their specific person so like a female uh you know middle age uh you know specific like say you know from you know 38 to 52 uh you know and say you know professional and and so they gave this name you know, like uh, a laura so they actually gave the person's name laura to this persona so that in their um, you know, in their marketing, uh, you know, in their when they're in their meetings and things like that, um, you know, they're always okay. Well, what would Laura think about this ad, or what would Laura think about whatever? And uh, there's a kind of funny story where um, one of the students at the, um, the at UVEC that um, uh, when I was involved in the in the panels there, uh, they were telling the story about how they had gotten a job at the Bay because in there they found out this information and they said um something like well um uh, you know what you, laura is my mom or something like that and um you know so immediately it got all their attention because now they kind of know that hey this person's totally in tune but you want to when you're writing an ad you want to be writing it to a specific person and and you can have a number of different personas that you write to. So if you if you think of the, um, you know, the TV show, the Brady Bunch there at the beginning where they're all in the squares, or if you think of like Hollywood squares and all these people, well, you know, you can have all these different people and those are your, um, you know, you'd have a specific person that represents these various target markets that you, that you're targeting. And, you know, one person could be, uh, you know, the old, the older lady from the church. Um, another one could be, um, you know, maybe, uh, the kind of, uh, oh, what do they call it? The, um, the helpful friend, you know, you, you hate the helpful friends, right? <laughs> um, and uh, like, oh, I'm just I'm being a helpful friend and I'm getting information for my friend about their funeral. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but so you can, you know, you can have uh, then you could if you know that target, like if you get if you are faced with that a lot, well, then you can create, you know, whether it's maybe just one like a little letter that you give to those people or a response or whatever. Um, and where you because th these people are usually kind of price sensitive or price shopper they're just you know going to be the helpful friend right and and then so in that specific letter you're going to talk about all the different uh, things that what makes you different and why you know it would be a mistake to choose your uh, to choose your competitor over you um, you know type of thing um, 
also too with a helpful friend you could you know you don't have to be um as empathetic um you know again depending on on the on the circumstances so just you think of it that way like hollywood squares or the brady bunch and they would have you know all these different people that you would then target to um and maybe there's some people that you don't want to target to maybe like hey you know what here's one group of people that uh you know what it's always a pain in the butt to deal with them or you know they're always wanting you know everything for nothing and um you know we're just not gonna we we won't cater to them or or we'll uh you know just have something very specific like hey this is you know and and again you'll then know like i can talk to this person in this manner uh, obviously you're going to do it with you know um you know still in a professional way but um you know they're going to be a, maybe a little more um you know to the point or business like or or that type of thing so you can then emulate that tone with them as well um just wondering if there's i don't see any more questions here i'll i'll hang on for uh, uh a few more minutes if um but if you've got a question, please um, feel free to you know just pop it in and, and ask. That would be great. Did. Um, Anyone uh, scan that QR code on there with their phone? Just uh, just let me know if you did or not, just to make sure that it came uh, came through okay. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, so one, yeah, so a couple, yeah, a couple people did. So, um, uh, what, um, Andre, what, uh, what cell phone are you using? What type of phone? Just um, the the video didn't load. iPhone 4s. Wow. Yeah, so the crazy. Should have worked. Um, I'll, I'll look into that. Thanks for thanks for. Um, Jim says that has not too much happened with the BlackBerry. Well, it, it loaded on my BlackBerry. I don't have my. Uh, well, there's my iPhone. I've got both. So. Um, So the video loaded on my BlackBerry. Let's see what happens here. It says that the video is unavailable. Okay. Presented to your funeral home today. While well, old. So that was from the iPhone. Hi, this is Robin Heppel. Are you, are you finding it difficult to make sense of the many advertising opportunities? That was from the BlackBerry. So, okay, well, I'll, um, 
Um, I'll check into that. The um, let's see, what app do I use on the BlackBerry? Um, well, there's a. Um, I use QR Code Scanner Pro, but it's not a it's not a pay. I don't think it's a paid app, it, or if it is, it's like ninety nine cents. Uh, but then it should just take you to your browser, where it would play in the browser, the default browser. Okay, folks. Well, um, I'm gonna sign off here and uh, grab a bite to eat, and I wish everyone uh, for. Um, for the folks in the U.S., uh, have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, don't forget to um, uh, take advantage of the Black Friday $100 off. That would be great, and um, and I hope I'll see you in Vegas, and um, in the meantime, uh, hopefully see you online. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Bye now.